The next step we'll do is to perform optical character recognition on this uh, scan. It's uh, quite easy. You just go to document scan, uh, sorry, document OCR text recognition and recognize text using OCR. So here we want all pages to be recognized. The language is not Danish, it's English. And we want to choose searchable image because it will correct the um, uh, uh, tilt of the page. So if, it's, it, if it was a little bit screwed in the scanner, it will be corrected. And um, that's basically neat. So we just run this process and it will take a lot of time as well. So it's uh, going through each page, rotating the page if necessary and recognizing the characters on the page. This will make the page uh, searchable, the text searchable in the PDF file. You can also highlight text when you do this. And that is one of the powerful uh, features of uh, Adobe Acrobat Professional that you can do this to scan documents so they get more useful for you since you yeah, can search and um, highlight, annotate, stuff like that. Now the book has been OCR'd and what I like to do is to save it with a new name. So I usually choose a suffix like OCR and save the content. Okay, so the next step is basically to perform yet another optimization which is automatic. You choose document, optimize, scan PDF file and uh, inside here you need to choose a um, certain number of settings. First you choose defaults and then you turn off all these options. And the basic idea of choosing default first was to make sure that this was positioned correctly. Okay, so now again the document is being processed by Acrobat and it will run this optimization process on all the pages. Now I can just say in the meantime that this process is one that I just found by trial and error and I don't have a completely um, perfect understanding about what happens in each step and why it works like it did but I did try all sorts of combination and, and I found that for black and white documents this would yield the lowest size document and we're really talking about factors of 10 compared to just anything you scanned directly. So it's, um, it's quite um, efficient, these steps. So um, now I did that processing. I usually um, apply another suffix. And then the next step would be to go to the menu advanced and use the PDF optimizer. And in PDF optimizer, you choose 150, 150 for down sampling um, color and grayscale images. And down here you choose uh, 400. Uh, so just read out the settings from this page and uh, you'll know what PDF optimized and we save again. So now again, it's processing the whole document to optimize these images. In particular, it's the, the JBIG2 compression that seems to be efficient algorithm with the black and white uh, bitmap images. So uh, this is probably one of the key reasons why it's working so well. Actually, we are done with the processing of the document inside Acrobat Professional. And um, all that remains would be to, to see the size of the document uh, at this point. So as I promised you, there'll be some difference uh, between the, the original document, which was 1.8 megabytes, and if we go uh, to these documents, uh, they are smaller in size. Um, the final book would, in this case, be 927 kilobytes. And um, actually, this example is not entirely good, because if we look at the document, you'll see that at some point we just have blank pages. So these blank pages will not give you a really true idea about what uh, the difference of the file sizes could be um, after all this processing has been done. Anyway, if we open the file, we'll find that this document is now searchable. We could search for nano and it will find a lot of words with nano inside this, this document. So it, it has been uh, processing the document correctly, at least in terms of uh, um, let's see, products, we have a word products, yes, it's found. And uh, often, let's say reference. 
And um, this is a good example of how clever Adobe Acrobat actually is because it will find a word like this if you search for it. Okay, so one of the things that is really useful and you must consider doing that with a scanned PDF is to create bookmarks. And um, um, you can see that we have here a list of bookmarks which are essentially the names of the pages. We can use that for absolutely nothing. So you just remove all those. And then you would start out here by writing front page. And then you go to, oh, sorry, that was not what I meant. Um, maybe you also choose a different view like this one. Um, okay, so this would be index. And then nanotechnology. And uh, chapter one, by the way, introduction. And then you could go to, let's say the next page was actually a subsection. Because what I want to show you is that you can actually move this so it becomes a subsection in the index. And uh, the index is so essential because one of the differences from having a real book in your hand where you can just quickly flip, uh, flip through the pages and having it online on a computer is that, well, obvious, obviously you, you have that possibility of flipping through pages so quickly, but an index helps enormously for an electronic document. So I can, uh, I can hardly uh, recommend that you do that. Um, I've done that on all my scanned documents, but it's such a huge amount of work. So just imagine that you have a thousand pages, you're really going to, um, to spend a lot of time creating this index. But if you're going to use the document, it's uh, very much worth it. So a few final ideas for the document is, of course, that we want the front page to be substituted with a uh, colorful one. And uh, we could easily do that if we open the um, original file here and we find that we have the um, front page. Or oh, actually, no, what we need is to uh, create a PDF from file and then we need to select the, the scan page here. Okay, and we now take this page and substitute this one like that. Okay, another thing you would like to do is to go to the document properties of this one and uh, you will give it a title. In initial view, what you do is you select bookmarks, panel and page, and you also select single page continuous and fit width, or you could select something different as you, as you please. Um, this depends. You will have to experiment to see what values you like the most. Okay. And you press OK. You might also like to check that the page number is actually working out for you. So if you go to, uh, to a page inside the document like this one, so what does it say? Actually, if you look at this page, it will tell you that we are now at page number two. So page number two is of course not the right page when it's named eight. What you can do is you can click here on page number one. And uh, if you right click here, you can um, choose number pages. You can say from page number seven to 52, I would like to reorder starting again from num, uh, number one and uh, with these numbers, one, two, three. So you can see now the first six pages are numbered one to six and the remaining are numbered from one again. You might just change the style of the first six pages to something different like Roman numerals and um, that will make it better maybe. You can also embed thumbnails and embedding thumbnails means that the scrolling in the in the uh, thumbnail view will be much quicker um, like you can see. And then obviously when we now have all these blank pages we'll remove the blank pages and um, it's also done very easily just like that. Okay. And, and we're there. And again we might now save it as final. So that's how you scan books. You create bookmarks, you create thumbnails, you 
make OCR and optimize them, especially if we're talking about black and white books, which many academic books are anyway. This process is very efficient to make it um, both efficient on the viewer because a viewer like the iPad, iPhone, or any other computer will render the pages much quicker if you use this process instead of uh, grayscale images or color images. And they will be much smaller as well, so it's easier to just send them over the internet or whatever. Just for the record, this book is actually already from a um, open uh, wiki books. It's uh, written by Christian uh, Mülheu from DTU Nanotech. So uh, I made this book as a print on demand uh, order. So uh, having cut this open and scanned it again, it's all done on free information, so don't worry about the copyrights. But if you are concerned about copyrights of scanning um, copyrighted books, you, you buy from a bookstore, please uh, look at our websites. We have a few hints uh, about what the rules are. But you are allowed to do it for personal use, but you cannot share it with other people. So basically it should be green light, go, scan your books at home. It should be okay for personal use.